بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم اسٹوڈنٹس آئی ایم یور انگلش ٹیچر ضیا آئی ہوپ دیٹ یو آر ڈوئنگ ویل آئی ویلکم یو ٹو انگلش گریٹ سیون ویڈیو لیسنس اسٹوڈنٹس ٹوڈے وی ول کور آر اسٹوڈنٹس لرننگ آؤٹ کم فرام آر یونٹ نمبر یونٹ نمبر سکس لیٹ سی واٹ اٹ از اینڈ ہاؤ وی کین اچیو اٹ سو دس از ویری فرسٹ لیکچر آف آر یونٹ نمبر سکس دس از اباؤٹ گرامر اینڈ آر ایس ایل او سیز ڈیمنسٹریٹ دا یوز آف مین اینڈ helping verbs and those include primary auxiliary and model auxiliary verbs in speech and writing so first in this lesson students we will mainly focus on our auxiliary verbs or helping verbs we will see them as main verbs and also in helping verbs now we will talk about the model auxiliary verbs or model verbs in general in the next lesson Now, let's focus on main and helping verbs and that include our primary auxiliary verbs and also, yeah, just this one and we will talk about model verbs in detail in the next lesson. But we will touch a little bit of that in this video lesson. So, I hope that you are, uh, you are very much clear about today's students learning outcome. Let's see how we can achieve it. This is your vertical linkage that links your SLO with the previous grade so that you have a very good understanding about it. Now, students, before we begin the lesson, let's brainstorm a little bit. Let's think about it. You need to recall what are verbs. You already know about them. And how do they function in the English language? So what are verbs? How can you define it? And why do you think it is important in our grammar? Think about it a moment so that we can move on. Yes, students, we use verbs to show action. And there are different kinds of verbs. There are different subcategories. So we need to learn them in order to work with the verbs correctly. Now, let's talk about primary auxiliary and model auxiliary verbs. Let's see the difference between them. So, there are three primary auxiliary verbs and they are be, have and do. And students, there are 10 common model auxiliary verbs and they are can, could, will, would, shall, should, may, might, must and ought or ought to. Now, these are our model verbs. They have a different function and a different purpose of using them in our verbs. So, first, let's talk about the auxiliary verbs. They are also called helping verbs. They help uh, in the sentence. They help the main verbs so that the message is very much understood. So, what are we talking about? We are talking about verbs and we are diving into some little detail about these verbs in the form of helping verbs and also in the form of main verbs. Now, let's talk about auxiliaries and model verbs over here. So, these verbs, the verbs be and that include am, is, was, etc. Our main verb is be. And it has various forms and functions. Have and do. When used with ordinary verbs to make tenses, passive forms, questions and negatives. So, it means that the verb be having all these different forms. They can be used in your tenses, in your passive forms of the active forms. And also to make questions and negative uh, kinds of sentences. They are called auxiliary verbs or just simply auxiliaries. Now, on the other hand, the verbs can, could, may, might, will, would, shall, should, must and ought, these kind of verbs, when you see them, you will categorize them as model verbs. Model with an A or just models. They are used before the ordinary verbs and express meanings such as permission, possibility, certainty and necessity. We also have need and dare can sometimes be used as 
modal verbs. So, need, need to or the other forms of the word bear, they are also used as our modal verbs. So, we have different purposes. If you want to show necessity, if something is, if you are seeking for permission and so all these kind of different functions when you need permission, when you need, when you want to show possibility of something happening, when, when you want to show certainty and also you want to show necessity of some action whether you are doing it or the other person you want to express others accept you. So, you can use all these different kinds of model verbs and here they are in front of you. We also talked about them. They are commonly 10 of them in different kinds of forms and they are called our models or model verbs. And when we talk about our auxiliaries or helping verbs, they are the different forms of the verb be. Be has different forms. It gets a little complicated students, but you have to memorize each and every function of am, is, was and were, etc. Now, let's see how do they work. Now, if you want to use them as main verbs. Now, students, there's one thing, a main verb and also there's another thing, helping verb. It helps the main verb. So, first let's talk about the main verbs. So, we saw that be, do and have are three main primary auxiliaries. So, let's talk about be over here. This is used as a main verb to indicate a state of existence, identity or characteristics. For example, if you want to show state of existence or if some if you want to show identity or characteristics of something. For example, I am the captain of our school's basketball team. Now, M is a variation of the verb B. So, M is showing the existence of you as the captain of our school's basketball team. Is, she is a responsible student. This is showing the existence, the state of existence of our pronoun she. She is a responsible student, always completing her homework on time. So, this is also showing uh, a characteristic, you can say. We were at the park yesterday playing soccer. Now, to be at the park yesterday, it is showing state of existence in the past. Do or did is used as a main verb to represent an action. First, here we were representing state of existence, identity or characteristics. Now, we are showing actions being done or being performed or any activity also. Let's look at some examples. We did our chores before going out to play or the teacher does a great job explaining difficult concepts. So, here it can be do in the present form or did in the past form. So, we have to use it according to the right tense. If you are talking about present tense, we will use do and if we are talking about something happened in the past, we will use the uh, other form, the second form of do which is did. Now, so we are done with be where we have am, is, were and it is showing existence now and now we talk about uh, just do and did which showing an action, which is showing an action. Now, let us talk about have. These are our three primary auxiliaries. We are talking about the last one, have. It is used as a main verb to indicate possession, ownership or experience. So, it means if you want to show possession, if you want to show that something belongs to something or some, someone owns something, then you will be using the verb have. For example, my brother has a collection of books on his bookshelf. Here, this is our main verb. We are using has as a main verb. Why not have? Because we are talking about a singular pronoun. We have a math test tomorrow. So, let us study together. Here, have is used for we, which is a plural pronoun. Do you have any hobbies or interests you enjoy? 
again when we are using when we want to show possession of uh, u or let's say u or i or v we are using have so you can see that even if it's a singular if i'm talking about you i'm addressing a single person but still i'm using the other form of has which is have so with uh, with you and i i'll use have and with he she or uh, any name i'll use has now till now we have talked about the forms of be in different variations when we are using it as the main verb there's no helping verb included but now we are going to talk about the same kind of verbs the forms of be but with but in the sense of a helping verb this is just helping out the main verb let's see how it works now be here as helping verb or auxiliary verb used as a helping verb to form continuous tenses it can be a present continuous past continuous or future continuous for example she's studying for her exam now we are showing existence a state of being that's why we used is and this is our uh, this is our continuous tense they were playing soccer yesterday again we have a continuous form of tense and we will be using were because we have they as a pronoun so whenever we have the word they the pronoun they we will use were not was so you need to be careful about this and next example is we will be going to the movie tonight now here will is used because or will be because we are dealing with a continuous tense of it could be a past present or future so here you can see that the same verbs the helping verbs they are used just to help the main verbs are playing studying and going but we are using helping verbs that comes before the main verb so you need to memorize uh, memorize this really well now let's talk about another form which is has do or had they are used as helping verbs to form questions if you want to form or ask questions you will use these different variations and you can also form negative sentences and that includes words like not in the simple present and also simple past tense for example the bus doesn't arrive until 9 a.m so we have to wait or why do we need to finish our homework before dinner this is a question we formed a question so that's why we will use do now finish is our main verb but here this is our helping verb did you visit your grandparents during the holidays again visiting is our main verb but did is our helping verb because it is in the past form now let's talk about have it is used as helping verb to form perfect tenses perfect tenses it could be present perfect past perfect or future perfect so i hope that you're clear about the basics of tenses in order to understand this for example she has visited paris twice in her life the team had won all their previous matches before the final game and by the end of the week i will have completed all my assignments so has had and have these are showing you that this is in the form of a perfect tense it could be in the past in the future and in the present so these words has had have they will be used in the perfect tenses it could be of any type of tense now students i hope we are clear about this we saw uh, the forms of be in the sense of main verb when they are acting as a main verb and also the same kind of 
verbs in different forms and we saw them in the helping verb or auxiliary verbs or auxiliaries. So, you can see that one verb can be used as a main verb and also an auxiliary or helping verb. And the helping verb students, keep this in mind, they will come before the main verb. That's the right position and place of helping verbs. Now, here after learning about these with different examples, you can uh, go through that video, uh, this video again, you can go to the previous slides and see that how the verb be is having different variations like was, is, am in the main verb and how they are transformed when you want to make a question, when you want to show passiveness in your tenses or when you want to use your negative sentences. Here you have an activity. Imagine that you were at the Olympics on the day when your favorite sports person won, won gold medals. Now write a paragraph describing the reaction of the crowd, what were people doing, thinking and feeling. Now we are dealing with our verbs, but you will use main and helping verbs in your writing. This is your task. You want to use, you have to show state of being, state of existence, if you want to show some characteristics, if you want to show some actions being performed or an activity. You can use all these different forms of be in order to do so, whether it's main verb or helping verb. This is your activity, you must do it and then consult your teacher for the right answers. Now students, you can watch this simulation link right after you finish the video lesson. This will tell you more about using the auxiliaries, the main verbs and also the auxiliaries which we also call helping verbs. So they are, this is a very important simulation, you need to watch it and take notes and write down the important things that you need to memorize. Now, here you can see this uh, main and helping verb worksheet that is attached in the resources, you can get one and solve it after you have clearly understood all these concepts. Next, we have a homework for you, where you will make and write three columns on a piece of paper or you can create a table on a digital document or on the paper as well. Label the columns be, do and have. If you remember, these are our primary auxiliaries. Think of interesting and imaginative sentences using be, do and have as main verbs. Feel free to use different tenses like present, past and future and be creative with your ideas. Now that you have understood that how the main verbs and the helping verbs or auxiliaries work, you can create a very good table, a very good um, uh, on the piece of paper, you can make different columns to show that how each uh, verb works. So this is a very important homework. I hope that you do it on time and submit it to your teacher. Now for the resources at the end of the video students, this PowerPoint presentation, the lesson plan, the worksheet and also a skill sheet which will allow you to polish your skills of using uh, different verbs in the form of main and auxiliary verbs. I hope that you have understood it. I hope we have uh, clearly covered our students learning outcome which was about using main verbs and auxiliaries or helping verbs. We will talk about uh, model auxiliaries or model verbs in the next video lesson. Take care of yourselves. Allah Hafiz.